Hello, um, following on from my coupling build up video that I've just posted recently on YouTube I thought I would do a video um, showing how I go about fitting the couplings um, to the, the rolling stock that I'm using. Um, now apart from Backman and Hornby brake fans I'm also using a lot of Parkside Dundas um, PC77 and PC78 uh, 21 ton hopper wagons. Um, I've got a few um, of the Backman 16 ton mineral wagons but it's mainly the hopper wagons that I'm using. So I thought as I say I would do a video to show how to how I go about fitting the couplings to the um, to the hopper wagons. Um, now with these hopper wagons there's, there's a little bit of plastic to remove and um, also the underside of the buffer beam needs reshaping which I use my Dremel for that and it's not quite as easy as it might first appear for to do this you have to be so careful with the Dremel in case you uh, cause any damage to any other parts of the wagon so it's a bit of a bit of a drawn out job you know taking a little bit off and trying it and taking a bit more off and trying it um, the 16 ton mineral wagon by comparison is a lot easier um, once the parts for the tension lock coupling are removed from the bottom of the wagon it would be just a simple case of drilling a few holes in the bottom of the wagon and open it up for us uh, to make a slot for to let the staple on the um, Spratt and Winkle coupling sit in. Um, I'll show you what I mean when I, uh, when I, when I start the video about fitting the, uh, the coupling to the wagon anyway I'll show you exactly what I mean. But uh, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll alter the camcorder um, and I'll come back to you and we'll make a start fitting the coupling to the wagon. Right, this is the wagon that we're going to be fitting the coupling to. This is the um, Parkside Dundas PC77 um, 21 ton hopper wagon. Um, it's one of the ones that hasn't uh, long been built this one. Um, I tend to just build them and stick them on the track. Um, you know, just, just for sure if you like. Um, till I get around to sorting them out properly. But uh, as I say, this one, this one needs a coupling zone. So we'll go ahead and fit the coupling to this wagon. Now what I was talking about before, um, about so, sort of shaving bits of plastic off and then checking it and taking a bit more off, I'll show you what I meant by that. Um, and I hope this doesn't go out of focus too much. These two V pieces of plastic there, the grey plastic that you can see there, we need to cut a slot across those, through those, and we need to reshape the bottom of the buffer beam. Um, to accept the staple that's on the um, the Spratt and Winkle coupling, and just to uh, just to remind you what I'm talking about there, if you remember, when we built up the, the the coupling in the last video, we had to use this little very small staple type thing through the top for to hold the coupling hook on at the bottom. Um, the uh, the staple itself acts as like a pivot for the coupling hook to move on, and it's that that we need the clearance for on the. Um, on the bottom of the wagon which is why as I say we need to make the alteration to these two V pieces of plastic and also we need to put like a, a chamfer on the um, on the inside edge of the buffer beam hopefully without coming through onto the outside of the buffer beam um, and spoiling it. If that does happen which it's happened a couple of times with my hopper wagons um, normally by the time you get it painted up and weathered up and that you can't really tell it's been damaged but if you go a little bit too heavy with the Dremel it is possible to ruin it all together. Now just as a comparison I've got a, um, a Backman 16 ton uh, mineral wagon here and as you can see the bottoms is very very different. If I just put the hopper wagon down for a moment I can explain to you about this one. The, um, the 16 ton mineral wagon would be a lot easier to fit the, uh, the Spratt and Winkle coupling too. Um, what you'd have to do with this is you need to remove that piece there and then this piece here which was uh, for the, uh, the tension lock couplings um, when you've got those removed you need to drill a series of holes in across the front of the wagon here and then just join it up as a slot and then the staple on the coupling that I've just showed you would sit inside the slot so I think it'll be a lot less work and a lot quicker and easier for to do the uh, the Backman wagon. So anyway what I'll do is I'll um, I'll get the Dremel sorted out um, which is what I'm using for to uh, you know remove and shape the plastic that we need to to do that in order to fit the Spratt and Winkle coupling. I'll get the Dremel sorted out and I'll make a start with that. And what I'll do is I'll do it bit by bit and then I'll um, I'll stop um, and let you have a look at so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Right, 
right, that's a Dremel gun. First of all, we're going to make a uh, the change to the uh, the two V pieces, the grey plastic that I showed you before. You have to be careful when you're cutting this in case you go go through the um, the underside of the wagon and come out where the uh, where the supports are for the body. So you have to take great care with that. Just do it bit by bit. So I'm going to start and remove, you can see the groove in the plastic there now, I'm going to start and remove the plastic that's closest to the buffer beam. I'll just switch the Dremel off. Now I don't know if you can make out there but um, since I've removed the plastic and altered the shape a little bit, we've got a load of like little bits of melted plastic inside there, which I normally stop for to clean those out. Um, I like to get all those out just in case they drop out. You know when the wagon's been pulled around the track and maybe caused derailments or other problems, so it's always best to remove these, which I'll go ahead and do that now. Right, as you can see that's that's cleaned up a little bit there um, and you can see better the the inside edge of the buffer beam here which is what we need to put a slope on that um, which I'll try and show you the um, the coupling if I lie the coupling in place you can see, I don't know if you can make it out there it's it's hard to hold this at the same time and try and keep everything in shot but the, the coupling the, the staple on the uh, on the bottom of the coupling for the pivot is still not um, it's not allowing the cup the mounting plate for to lie flat on the wagon I don't know if you can see it it's slightly raised up there and that's we need to remove the um, that part the the inside part of the buffer beam there for to uh, allow that to sit in there so once again we'll get the Dremel and this this um, doing this bit here this this is the, the trickiest part of the whole operation once you once you get that done um, That's it done the coupling will sit on top of the wagon You know once you've cleaned up any rough plastic on the top here the couple the coupling the mountain plate will sit Sit fine on, on the uh, on the wagon there to get glued in position the good thing is um, Like me if you're only putting if you're if you're fitting Spratt and, Spratt and Winkle couplings and you're only fitting the one hook on which is what I'm doing. The other one, you don't need to make any modifications at all to this end. You just plunk the uh, the mountain plate on with the coupling loop on, which I'll show you what I mean, just in case you're not sure. This is the one with just the uh, the coupling loop on. That one will just go straight onto the wagon and glue that straight on, no problem at all. So as I say, it's just the one end that you have to make the alteration to. So I'll get the Dremel again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get that, um, you know, that chamfer that I mentioned, the slope part on the bottom of the buffer beam so the coupling will sit flat. And as I say, this is the trickiest part, so I'll be just taking my time with this bit. Stop the Dremel. Now if you have a look there, I don't know if you can make it out, um, you should be able to. There's a big lump of plastic just formed on there, which is just what it is, it's just the uh, the inside of the buffer beam as it's starting to melt. The, uh, the plastic starts to uh, collect and you just need to cut that away with a modeling knife, which I'll do that now. As you can see there, I don't know if you can see that on my hand, that's quite a quite a chunk of plastic there that we've had to remove. And we'll just give it a, a clean up inside with the uh, with a modeling knife. Now at this point you can see um, I'm just trying to just clean that up first. There's a little tiny bit, I don't know if you can make it out on the camera, there's a little bit of a mark on the buffer beam there. I don't know if you can pick that up. No, that might just be a little bit of plastic that just needs trimming off. I don't know. I'll try and get that off. 
yeah it's a, it's a little tiny bit of a mark but by the time you get some paint on there you'll not see that so what I'll do now is if you can if you can see there you can see the amount of plastic that's been removed from the buffer beam which is a fair bit I'll try the coupling on there I think we'll still need to take a little bit more off before the coupling will fit on but we'll give it a go Yeah, that's actually fine. Um, what you have to do is, when you fit the coupling on, you need the coupling to be able to come flush with the front of the um, flush with the front of the buffer beam. Because what you're aiming for, the coupling loop has to be in line. Sorry, that went out of, uh, out of shot there. The coupling loop has to be in line with the the very front edge of the buffers. Um, a lot of people, what they tend to do is, and it looks it looks really horrible. Um, the tent, the glue. The coupling wire across uh, across the two buffers, the, the, the glue the wire straight across the buffers, and, that, and I think that looks horrible. I think it's it, it's better to, you know to do it this way, take your time, um, and fit it this way. It looks it looks far better. So what I'll uh, what I'll do is the uh, since the coupling's going to fit now, I'll um, I'll mix up some epoxy glue and we'll get this glued into place, and then. Um, once the epoxy is set, you'll be able to see what I mean about positioning it correctly on the wagon so that you don't have any problems with the hook or the coupling loop. So I'll go ahead and mix up some epoxy. And I'll just shift these bits of plastic out the way. The epoxy glue that I'm using, um, which of anybody that saw the uh, the buffer stop video that I did, is just this uh, five minute Z epoxy stuff. I use the same stuff on the buffer stop. Any time that I need epoxy, I buy this stuff. I think this is really good. I've tried Araldite, um, and I can I can't quite get away with um, Araldite. I, I find this stuff uh, far better. So as I say, I'll mix a little bit up, and we'll get the uh, we'll get the coupling fixed onto the wagon. You just need the tiniest tiniest bit of uh, glue, well resin anyway. And then more or less the same amount of hardener. In which it's coming there now. There we are. We'll give that a mix up. It's really good stuff. This I like this glue when it comes to using epoxy. Um, as I said, I couldn't I couldn't get away with Araldite, and the results that I seem to get with Araldite seem to be, you know, it was a bit hitty messy with Araldite, and um, so I, um, I, I started to use this stuff instead. Right, that should do. So what we need is just um, just something to spread the glue onto the wagon here, um, and I'll use a screwdriver as a spreader. As you can see, I've got all the gear. Just pick up a bit on the screwdriver and just when you what I what I should have said was before I do this um, when you if you're if you're doing your wagons if you decide to fit the Sprat and Winkle couplings and you're going to do them the same way as what I'm doing don't put any glue on on up to there and up to there leave that center bit um, without glue because what can happen and I've had this happen before and I had a I had a hell of a job getting it uh, sorted out is the back of the paddle can get glued onto there and um, it, what a job I had getting it off. I got it off in the end but um, I had to make a few repairs to the wagon for to be able to you know to, to, keep, to be able to keep using it at some point. So as I say I leave um, you know leave that little bit clear of glue there. Anyway let's get the glue on. So I'll try and move this into shot so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. So what I'll do is I'll just go down the sides there onto the bottom of the buffer beam and just so far along there. You'll find that even though you're not putting the glue on all the way along, the glue that is on will be, you know, there'll be more than enough on there for to hold it. There'll be no problem at all. And just put a small amount right along the front of the buffer beam, like that. I'll just give that screwdriver just the end of the screwdriver rub, rub clean. 
Right, we'll get the we'll get the coupling on now. The coupling's a little bit fiddly for to get on because you've got to you've got to position it and you've got to get it um, you've got to get it in line. You know the coupling loop in line with the front of the buffers, but the coupling hook has got to be in line with the plastic hook on the wagon as well, so you know that it's in the centre. So it can take a little bit of doing. I just need to slide that along a little bit. It's just a case of just fiddling around with it, you know, to uh, till you get it right, sort of iron it in with the hook and trying to keep the uh, the coupling loop in line with the buffers as well. You know actually I'm not quite happy with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that back off. I'm just going to quickly clean the, uh, the coupling, the mounting plate up. I think what it needs is it needs a little bit more taken off uh, off with a Dremel there. I noticed when I had the uh, the mounting plate on it wasn't quite sitting far enough forward. So I'll just take a bit of kitchen towel and just get as much of the glue off as we can. That should do it. This is one of them things I was on about, about, you know, sort of the trial and error a little bit. Um, I thought that the um, the mountain plate was on fine, but uh, when I've come to sort of eye it up properly, I could see that it wasn't quite far enough forward, so it needed to, uh, it needs a little bit more off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, so I'll get the Dremel going again. The good thing is we're very close to, um, you know, having, getting the... Uh, getting the, uh, the spacing right for it, so it shouldn't take too long now for to do this. I'll stop the drama. Right, and again we've got another build up of plastic there, so we'll just remove that. Now it looks pretty much okay on the front there. So we'll try the coupling plate on again. There's a little bit of plastic there that needs to come off. Tell you what, it's not easy doing these videos where you're trying to, you know, you're trying to do something and then and keep it in shot at the same time, so people can uh, hopefully see what you're doing. But I don't know if you can make out there, but there's there's a bit more being took off the um, the inside of the buffer beam there. Um, I know it looks raggy and untidy on the inside, but obviously, um, when the mountain plates on with the coupling, you you can't see inside of there, so you know it, it doesn't really make any difference. And if you have a look at the front of the buffer beam. I don't think there's, there's a couple of little marks on the very bottom of the buffer beam which you might be able to see um, but again you know you might be able to tidy that up a little bit with a with a model and knife just sort of take the top off that and then get some paint on and you'll not be able to see that. So we'll try this coupling hook on again Yeah, I think that still needs a touch more off. Switch that off. A bit more plastic again to cut off.
Right, I'll just go and have a look at the front of the uh, the edge of the buffer beam there, just to see what that's like. Yep, I think I think we can get away with that there, and I think I'm hoping that that might be uh, that might be enough there now. So I'm going to try the coupling on again. As I say, this is the hardest part of the wagon to do. Um, you know, it, it, it requires the most work for to get the coupling to fit. The other end, as I say, is, you know, it's a breeze. You just mix the glue up and you, uh, you know, you just put this one on. You just plonk it on and just position it and then let the glue go off and that's it done. You haven't got any of this sort of trouble with the, uh, with the other end of the wagon. Yeah, right. I think that's, we've got that this time. So I'll go ahead and mix up another little bit of glue. Yeah, the stuff had gone too hard, we couldn't have used that. What I did try doing was, um, I tried gluing both couplings on, you know, the coupling on each end of the wagon, both at the same time using the same the same glue um, and it wasn't it wasn't really that easy to do because they kept sliding around as you're positioning one the other one went out of position and then when you put the other one right the other one had gone out of position so I think with the Spratt and Winkle couplings I think it's just as easy to um, just put one on at a time let the glue go off and then mix up a little bit of glue for the other one I think that's the best way to do it right Get the special glue spreader again. Get some on the side where we did before. Put some on the other side. A bit of glue gone on the front of the buffer beam, but you can get that off with your finger. Right, just clean the end of the screwdriver off. Move this cardboard out the way, and we'll get the uh, we'll get the coupling on. Ah, oh, that's much better. I can tell straight away the way that's gone on. That's much better. Right, we just need to line it up. Whoops, that's just dropped off. Good thing about this epoxy glue is you've got you know you've got a good few minutes for to um, you know get stuff moved around in that. It's best to get it right. Right, I think that should be okay there. What we'll do is, we'll go ahead and try and get the other side on. I don't normally do this, but um, we'll try and get that on. So we'll just spread some glue around. It doesn't matter if you put the glue on the uh, the middle part of this one, because uh, there isn't any um, there isn't any coupling hook on for to get you know for to get fouled on the uh, on the plastic you know that had the glue on before the V bit. So um, that should be okay. So what we'll do now is we'll just take this one and just lie it straight on the t on top there, like that. And then in the same way as we did with the other one, turn it round. And what you're looking to do is you want the, the edge of the coupling wire here 
in line with the buffers, it, it, with the front of the buffers, and then also the coupling hook in line, the, the plastic coupling hook on the uh, on the model in line with the centre of this. So I can see that this needs to go over a little bit. Which I would say would do it there. Yep, that should be fine. So we'll just give the glue a few minutes to go off and then we can um, we can pick it up and have a look at it. Just while I'm on about um, gluing the couplings onto the uh, onto the wagon, um, the first time I tried to get them on, um, I tried sort of too quick. I tried to get it on too quick, and I ended up making mistakes with it. Um, and it's it, it's really quite important to you know just take your time with it. With the epoxy glue, you've got plenty of time to um, you know to move the stuff around and that for to get it in the right position because um, once once the stuff's gone off it's 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 really hard for to um, you know to get the coupling back off again if you needed to um, as I said that time when I glued the paddle to the plastic and um, because I had spread glue all the way along um, or, um, I, I had, it was a really bad job getting it all off so I was lucky to get it off but uh, it's it, it should be going off there now. It looks like it is. What I normally do is I normally just get the uh, get the glue with the you know and, and, and that the the, uh, the bit that I use for mixing with and that and just keep checking that one. That's hard. That's um, that's it pretty much done. But as I say, I think you know the the secret with this with fitting these is just taking your time and getting it right. Um, and it'll it, it'll pay divid uh, dividends when you come to um, you know put the wagon in a train and that. Sometimes you have to um, make an adjustment maybe to the coupling loop on the front here um, It might be slightly out of shape um, You know I was talking about that in the last video where when you build the couplings up The coupling loop might be out of shape or the um, the actual coupling hook itself Might need a little bit of attention you know to get that um, To get that working properly because uh, they, they, they can't get bent as I say it's just very soft brass and it, it is easy to bend them accidentally. Sometimes you bend them and you don't even know you've bent it. Um, you know, so it's it. You know, it's best just to take your time and and do the job properly. But uh, they're gluing nicely anyway. I think probably the glue the glue should be sort of hard enough now to uh, just to sort of flip the wagon over and just have a look at it and see what it looks like. I think the, um, the coupling on this side is slightly off to one side, so we'll just ease that forward a touch like that. I think that should do it. Yep, yeah, that's fine. And we'll just check this one. And that one looks fine as well. You can see the um, the coupling's operating fine. You can see the little three-link chain there. That coupling's working absolutely fine as well, so there's no problem with that, um, and that one's okay. So, so yeah, that's um, that's pretty much fitting Sprat and Winkle couplings to hobby wagons. Um, as I say, it's a little bit involved. Uh, you have to take your time with it. Um, it's nowhere near as easy as what it would be with the, um, you know, the 16-ton mineral wagon, the Backman mineral wagon, or possibly the Hornby ones are the same, I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, as I say, it's a little bit more involved, but I think it's well worth it, because I think the couplings are, they're, they're, they're good couplings, um, and they're certain, I think they're certainly better than tension locks, as I say, I hear tension lock couplings, they look horrible. And, uh, you know, by the time you get some paint on these, um, on, the, on the actual wire coupling loop, and on the coupling hook itself, you know, I'll be absolutely fine. You'll, you'll barely see those on the layout. So, um, yeah, so that's it pretty much. So thanks for watching and I'll, um, I'll speak to you in another video. Cheers. Bye.